Hello and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the To-Do List. I'm your host, Eric Fisher. This is the show where I talk to the people behind the productivity. This week, I'm sharing with you a conversation that I had with Sean Blanc. However, the tables are turned this time. This is a, quote, interview that goes the other way around. This is me being interviewed by Sean Blanc or... I really, it's it's still just a conversation. It's just that Sean is leading the conversation this time. This is a recording that Sean did with me a little while ago for a bonus audio track for his Things 3 course over on The Sweet Setup. Now, Sean has been on the show before. In fact, last time he was here, and he needs to come back again soon, but the last time he was on the show, we talked about sabbaticals. Uh, we talked about an eight-week work cycle and some of the stuff that they do over at The Sweet Setup. But again, this is a bonus conversation he recorded with me as a bonus that uh, also went along with a lot of other bonuses, uh, recordings with a lot of other people, people that have been on the show. And we talk about workflows and task management and all things productivity. It's going to be a fun little conversation here. But again, I thought I would share this with you in case you wanted to jump over and check out the Sweet Setups course called All the Things. In that course, you can get up and running with Things 3, their task management app of choice. In fact, my task management app of choice. I'll put the link for that course in the show notes in case you want to check it out. You can find that at beyondthetodolist.com slash 283. I will also link back to the episode that Sean was on previously in case you haven't listened to that one or want to go back to that one fairly quickly and easily. But with that, I'll get out of the way and say enjoy this conversation that Sean Blanc had with me. I'd like to welcome today uh, my good friend Eric Fisher. Eric runs a podcast called Beyond the To-Do List. He's an author. He's written some productivity books like Hit the Mark and uh, Ready, Aim, Fire. Uh, and he's just cool, smart, clever guy, chill. It's always fun. Like when you meet chill productivity people, it's like... Get a hold of those people. So anyways, Eric, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, I'm glad to be chill. Awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> you and I first met in Nashville uh, a while ago. We were out there for, or I was out there for a conference and uh, and we got to hang out and have lunch and everything. And it's been great kind of getting to know you over, over the time since then. Um, so I wanted you to just share, you know, you've got your podcast beyond the to-do list. And I kind of love sort of the ethos behind it. And maybe you can share more about this, but just your kind of focus on, you know, like moving past the like the nitty gritty of productivity and more to like where productivity actually meets real life. And just actually, you know, like our friend Mike Vardy kind of talks about like being productive as opposed to just doing productive. And so anyways, I would just love to hear some of your story. Maybe you can start with sort of what you do. Um, what is the story behind your podcast and kind of that, that phrasing beyond the to-do list. And then I want to get into some of the details and some advice from you as well. Sure. Yeah. Well, I can say this, that, um, that whole being productive versus just doing productivity thing is, is a, is a, you know, that hits the nail on the head for me as well. I knew that, <laughs> so I kind of came into the whole podcasting thing a little bit sideways. I didn't, I didn't come in intentionally being like, I'm going to build a brand and I'm going to do a show and interview a bunch of people and then I'll be well known. Like it was always about a passion project for me. I had done previous podcasts. Most people don't know this. I did a comedy podcast with a friend of mine, like nice. early on, like we're talking summer 2007. And wow. yeah. And, uh, and then I did, I was a co-host with, uh, Cliff Ravenscraft, the podcast Answer Man, back when we used to do a social media segment on his show. And then, you know, things kind of branched out from there. And eventually he and I stopped doing that show, but I wanted to continue podcasting because I really love doing it. And I just said to myself, like, what do I like if I was going to do something by myself, what would I do? And it just kind of came down to I was just like, you know what? I want to know how people do the great work that they do, which sounds really broad. And I said, well, what about like when they can't do it? Like, what are the hangups? What are the things that keep them from doing that good work? Whether it's being disorganized or managing their time or, you know, feeling depressed or, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. issues, you know, relationships or, you know, all these different things and or lack of sleep, et cetera, et cetera. And I realized like, that's like productivity beyond the to-do list. And, and as I was saying it, 
out loud in my head, I realized that was the name for the show. And it was this cool way to go tangentially off of just the basic, like, here's how you organize a to-do list and here's how you manage your time that is like kind of, you know, buttoned up and stiff and I don't know, like corporate, if you will. Yeah. And, you know, so my, my approach is, I mean, without being hippy dippy, like I'm very much the, um, guy who tries to get people on to have conversations with me for the benefit of the audience and myself in kind of a holistic way, you know, about all these different topics that affect you as a human being, as a person and your life and how to have a good life. And it's tied in with all of the, you know, it's, it's tied in with all that productivity stuff, Mm -hmm. but, uh, in a, in a more like, what does it really matter to be getting that stuff done? Like, what's the effect? Like, if you got all your stuff done, then what would you do? Why? Why? You know what I mean? Yeah. I love, that's, that's a, a great, great question. question. Like, why? Like, if you, what, what's this unto? Where are you going? Um, let's see. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just going to find more things to do. I'll never <laughs> exactly. Do There's never yeah. an end to the possible things we could be doing. So, you know slowing down, doing less, doing the right things. I mean, all those different, you know, that's a lot of the stuff that, you know, no, it's, 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 it's not about doing things. It's about doing the right things. Well, yeah, but that's still simplified. Like it's still more than that, you know? Yeah. So that's really good that there's, there's more to life. I was actually, um, also recently, and actually again, I was out for Michael Hyatt's, uh, big plan your year, uh, his, you know, your best year ever event. And, um, really enjoyed it. And I I took away some stuff. He was talking about the importance of identifying some of your limiting beliefs. And I actually kind of discovered a little bit about myself related, just some, some thoughts that I had about, um, if I was ever able to, to grow my business and the work that I'm doing, um, which is a goal of mine is, is to grow the business to a point where I'm not required to be involved on a day to day basis where I can kind of um, not quit the business by any means. I, I love what I get to do, but being able to step out of some of the day-to-day requirements and be more at that, that higher level um, where I'm working on the business, right, instead of in it. Um, I had this thought of, like, if I ever get to that spot, will I, like, will I, A, will I know what to do? Will I be able to um, choose the right things to do with how I spend my time? And also, like, it was even just some stuff related to just some, some of these limiting beliefs I had even about my own marriage of, like, wow, what's, you know, what's my wife going to think? Like, is she going to have expectations of how she will then want me to spend my time if I don't, like, have to go to work every single day in order to make money that puts the food on our table? Like, if I'm able to be removed from that by a little bit, is she going to have expectations? And, you know, obviously she and I talked about it and, you know, she has zero expectations. She's like, no, you, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but anyways, it's like, so anyways, like you're saying that I actually had some fears of like, Oh, I actually did get everything done. I'm I'm not sure like what that would look like, you know? So anyways. Yeah. And, and here's the, here's (laughs) the way to tie it back in. Uh, what you were just talking about with what people traditionally think of as productivity. And, and here's how I see it. I could be sitting worrying about all that stuff or thinking about it or, you know, unclear and have no direction, et cetera, sitting in my cubicle. And there's really little difference between me sitting in my cubicle back, at, you know, in an office versus here if I sit because I work from home. Like I still have all that stuff in my head. And if I don't deal with it, then the work's not getting done or it's my brain is trying to work on that stuff along with my heart, you know, and all the pieces of me to figure out the answer to that question, that problem, that concern when – I really should be either present with my kids or my wife or folk getting this project done or having I'm in the middle of this call, et cetera. So it affects yeah. it. It affects everything. Before we move on, I'm kind of curious. So you've got this podcast that like you've talked with so many people about the, the kind of the challenges that they face when like their productivity system so sort of like fails them, so to speak, or like when they hit those roadblocks and got to overcome stuff. What I would love to hear from you. What are some of the like what what are common common issues that you've started to see? Like common maybe challenges, common mistakes uh, that people encounter. I think honestly, it comes down to consistency. Where we think that the one thing that we figure out like is going to like suit us forever, you know. 
um, like me, like I, <laughs> so I, I mean, it really does. It really does come down to like every so often, like you just need to blow it all up again and start over and pick the pieces back up and say, well, this works. Well, let me see if this works now. Let me try this again because it's not necessarily about saying like, you know, Oh, I've, I have now finally achieved the engineering of the perfect morning routine. And from this point forward till I die, this is my morning routine. And yet I kind of think of that every single time. Like that's how I treat it. And then when it doesn't work or like something gets, you know, a wrench gets thrown into it, I start to say, "Ah, I guess it doesn't work. And, and, and that's really, I mean, that's really what it all boils down to. You have to have certain, you know, structure, certain intention, certain, you know, it, it's good to have routines. It's good to have rhythms. It's good to have rituals. Whatever terminology you want to use for those workflows, even it's good to have those and to know yourself. I mean, I've been spending a lot of time talking to people about self discovery recently and knowing yourself and self awareness is even a better term probably for it. And then from that building these routines, knowing the best ways for you to interact with people, all of that stuff, but being flexible, being (laughs) malleable, being able to say like with a click of a button, oh yeah, sure. I can reschedule that for this time or, you know, et cetera. And the only way you know that is to, to know, you know, by having captured the right things, by reviewing on a regular basis and having those kind of be the, the most consistent things. You know, not the structure of the system, not the system itself, Mm -hmm. but the, I don't know, still kind of think of it this way. If you're on a road trip and you know where you're ultimately ending up, you know, you're ultimately uh, your destination that you're trying to get to. And then the detour shows up. It's the ability to reroute yourself. In other Mm -hmm. words, and I think that's where it comes down to is people thinking, no, I have to take this one route the entire time, the rest of my life. That's the way, like, what's the one tool that I'll use for the rest of my life? Well, (laughs) you know, whichever one you'll use. Yeah, exactly. And I think that when you have that mindset of, you know, I need to get the best productivity system. I need to have the best morning routine. I need to have the best focus habits. And so a, that keeps you from ever starting because you're, you're in perpetual research mode. And so you're constantly putting off the decision to start, um, or implement anything because you're, you're waiting to find the best. And then let's say you do find, you know, something that you, you decide is the best for you. If by, for some reason that begins to not serve you down the road, you feel like you failed. And it's this personal issue of like, oh, I failed. (laughs) You know, I'm not productive. I can't be focused or whatever. Um, or that system didn't work for me. Thus, no systems work for me. And those are all just, those are roadblocks. And I love your, I love your approach that like just sometimes you got to blow it all up and start over. Um, I love that. I've, I've always felt like time management really is a moving target. And so you find what's working now and you just go hard after that. And then as things adjust, you just adjust with it and you allow that target to shift. And that's totally fine. Totally normal. I have a perfect example of this. I'll share with you from today. I, I, okay. I felt like, cause I've been trying to get back into being a healthy person and it's been too long not being there. And so I've been trying to get up and get out of the house and go to the gym immediately. Like we're talking up between like, like five to five thirty, and then there for a half hour and then back before anybody else is up at the house and then mm-hmm. doing a little bit of work, then get my son off to school this morning. I woke up between about five and five thirty, and I had the hardest time just getting myself awake And it's because it's this time of year uh, at this recording, like there's it's dark out, like it's still dark out at like six and, you know, on through to like seven o'clock. But so what I did was like I didn't cop out. I didn't not go. What I did was I said, well, I'll put my stuff on. I'll do a little bit of work. I'll drink some coffee. I'll drop my son off at school at about 730, then go. And then I did. And then I did it and I got home and I'm like, I'm glad I went. That's awesome. And so having that flexibility and then I got to thinking in the car, <laughs> um, wait a second. I think I have trouble 
getting there because it's so dark and I'm so tired and I'm, you know, I am, you know, sleep deprived. Like, we, you know, those of us who are busy, like sleep is important. It's super important. So I, I said to myself, wait a second, like, what if I allowed myself to sleep in later and still I'm getting up at like six something and then I get my son ready and I take him and then I go from now on, at least until the summer when things change, when he has, doesn't have school, et cetera. And I'm like, all right, let's try this. So there you go. Like I course corrected, I rerouted and I had to think through the process of what was most important while well, my sleep, my health my son, et cetera. So there you go. No, I love that. I, I think that ability to course correct and to not feel that you're a failure is huge. And to be like, oh, let's try this. Let's see how it goes. It, it really is just an experiment. And I love that. I think it's huge. So I've been experimenting a bunch with even just some uh, the, the paper stuff. Like I've always kind of been, not always, but for the last several years, I've kind of slowly been getting deeper and deeper into the bullet journal stuff. Um, but I still use things as my main task manager. So I kind of have this hybrid approach and like just constantly kind of fiddling with, okay, maybe this will be a better way for me to stay on top of tasks or maybe this sort of review or maybe asking myself these questions at the end of the week instead of these other questions and just different stuff. Um, and just like at the end of the day, it's just a way to keep going forward, keep your lifestyle healthy, um, keep yourself focusing on being intentional and being proactive and kind of taking that ownership of how you're spending your time as opposed to just, well, whatever, and throwing it all to the wind. So I'd love to know, Eric, like, so I kind of want to get into that, some of the nerdy details for a minute. Um, if you're willing to share, like, what is like when you're managing your day, when you're managing your to-do list, um, what are the tools that you use uh, for that. Like, I, I just super curious, like on some of the nerdy details. Sure. Well, you know, you guys do all these, like what it's the, the short or the, wait, it's like the <laughs> snapshot and it shows like the setup. Cause duh, it's the, the sweet setup. And exactly. uh, so if you were looking at a picture of mine, you'd see a standing desk built out of Ikea furniture. There's like, uh, you know, two like desk things here. And anyway, at this desk, you would find this pretty big, um, Dell, I don't know. It's like 24 inch and it's uh, 4K. And then I've got the MacBook Pro here, the 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 one with the touch bar, the 15 inch. And uh, I got my microphone here right in front of me, which I've had for, gosh, now, I don't know, five years, something like that. Uh, the Rode Podcaster mic. And then uh -huh. I've got the iPhone 8 Plus. I've got my iPad uh, 10.0. Five? Is that the right number? Anyway. Yeah, the iPad Pro. The Pro 10.5 screen. And, but those are, that's all the tech stuff. I've got some Bose headphones here for noise cancellation, which I use with my, I bought into the lifetime, um, uh, plan for the focus at will, which is the music mm -hmm. that if you're familiar with the, it's not music, they say, but, right. but it is, it sounds <laughs> anyway, it helps you focus. So when you need to focus like noise canceling headphones and music that helps you focus, like yep. it, it's, it's literally like, I, I don't know. It's like putting on a super suit. It's like the iron, you put on the iron man suit suddenly, you know, kind of a thing for focus. And then I'm using, obviously I'm using things to kind of anchor my tasks. But then I also use like, I use Evernote. And, uh, I, one of the things I really love doing is like, Hey, if I'm just spitballing, if I'm brainstorming, I will grab the iPhone, hit the microphone with Evernote and I'll just kind of ramble stuff out. Cause I can think while I'm talking. And then once I've got that, like quote rough draft, it's already synced to everywhere. And then I can edit in a proper mode with like actually looking at the text in a different mm -hmm. place or whatever. So let's see, what else am I using? Um, so how do you, how long have you been using things? I've been using, well, so since when, thr when things three came out, so here's, here's the story of, um, no, actually it's further back than that. Like I really had the, I had, I think one or two and back in the day and I, this was before I was ever doing the show. Um, I decided to kind of, you know, kind of check it out and I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is kind of cool. But like you know, I didn't really use it. Like I didn't jump in and like dedicate that, you know, commit to it in other words. Um, but when things three came out, like I'd already been, I, I think I was using, I don't know what I was using to be honest. I, I was using a number of the, Oh, I was using OmniFocus. Duh. Um, 
I had landed on OmniFocus because I had that on all the devices and it was the latest version and it synced and it, it did enough of what I needed. So I didn't, you know, I didn't, it wasn't broken. So I didn't try to fix it, but things three <laughs> came along. And what happened was I downloaded the Mac, uh, free trial of it. And I just started playing with it. Like I went in and I'm adding stuff and I'm seeing what it can do and I'm going through the settings and I'm, realizing that I'm actually enjoying it and that kind of attention to that, you know, emotion, if you want to call it that of, Oh, I'm having fun using this tool suddenly caught me. And I'm like, um, crap, I'm going to have to buy this. Aren't I? And so no, I, I quickly went that. to the, you know, that that's how it got me. Like it mm-hmm. wasn't it, because it's not that it does. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't do everything. It doesn't do tons of stuff that other things can't. Most of them don't, to be quite honest. Most of the task managers all have this certain like baseline. And then it's more about how they organize that structure of what they can do, though there are like bits and pieces that are different across the board uh, in, you know, some power checklist. Somebody's got it where they've got like can do this, can't do this, can do this of all of them. But it felt good. And it was the user interface. And and so then I downloaded I look I, you know. When I bought the Mac app, I was like, well, I'm going to go all in. I bought the Mac app. I bought the iPad app. I bought the iPhone app and just said, I'm done. I'm in. This is what I'm using till, till they break it. So. No, I love that. I want to come back to the idea of that as you were fiddling around with it, you realized you were enjoying it. And there was kind of that, you know, like a, like a delight, almost a human element. And I think that's, you know, obviously a cool feature that things has, um, which I think they've got it more than any other app out there. But I feel like that understanding or that relevancy of, you know, here's an, here's an app or here's a tool that's actually delightful to use. There's, there's a less friction there for using it. Um, I feel like that's just a critical component for any productivity system, so to speak, is when there is a delight or an ease of use or there's, there's friction has been removed for, for you using it, you're more likely to stay in the system more likely to continue using that system. If, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's exactly it. it I, and, and I don't know that it was like, Oh goody, like uh, it's Christmas. I get a brand new, you know, software kind of a feeling. It was more that it, as I was using it, I didn't really have to concentrate on using it. Like I didn't have to figure it out uh, other than like one or two things where I was like, can it do this? Can it do that? And I, you know, as I went through the tutorial, cause that was actually the cool thing is it came with these tutorials built in as projects. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh, this is, this is nice. This is like, you mean it can do that? Cool. You know, that kind of thing. And, but what you said about it kind of just gets out of the way. Like now I don't even think about it. I just literally am using it, not. Uh, you know, other than your course where I, you know, want to go through it and see, am I missing something here that makes it even more, makes me even more of a power user? Like I don't have to think about it. It's literally as easy as if I had a notebook always with me and I just picked it up, flipped to the right tab and then wrote something down in the right place, the right time or the brainstorming section or the like for future time kind of stuff, you know, it's that easy. Like it gets out of my way of me doing my work. I don't have to spend as much time setting up the system because the system's set up, which, which I guess is true for most things, but this just clicks with me, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I completely agree. And I think that, you know, even in the bigger picture of, you know, we were talking earlier about sometimes a lot of people are looking for that perfect system or the, the perfect routine or whatever. And, you know, just the pragmatic approach, like you were sharing with, just readjusting even your morning workout schedule a little bit to something that's just a little bit more enjoyable. It's a little bit more enjoyable to sleep in a little extra and then go to the gym later in the morning. And that like having that delight as part of it actually makes it more likely to do it. Especially, I think, especially on the front end as you're developing habits or you're trying to get used to a system is focusing on, you know, what you enjoy, what's interesting to you, what would be compelling to you and using that as kind of the momentum to get going and get, um, you know, until the, the system that you use or whatever the habit that you're trying to build is kind of taken root, um, you know, focusing on what's enjoyable about it or what feels good about it uh, can be really powerful, I think. Yeah. And, and the other thing I'm, you know, as I'm standing here, I opened things up real quick to take a look at it. And 
just the fact that like I know whatever changes I make in my approach, in my various workflows, like this accommodates that. It just goes with the flow of what however I want to do things. So no, that's awesome. So any other, like, uh, so you kind of shared a little, some of the details of your system, any specific, uh, like habits or routines or rituals that you use as part of your approach towards doing your work and staying productive? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> well, the part of what I'm trying to do now is, and, and this is actually something, uh, that was out of the Michael Hyatt conference that I went to the free to focus one. And it was, uh, Talking about your, your, your routine, uh, for your weekend or being intentional about planning out your weekend. Uh, I know like me, you are also very much into the like, I don't know, par- spending time as a Luddite, <laughs> getting completely off like social media, mm-hmm. connectivity, like screens, all that kind of stuff. And what I've been doing, and, and this is, this has been huge, um, is what I'll do is, I will plan out. I actually, so I, I literally have this as a recurring thing on Friday. Uh, it's a, it, a return, a recurring checklist task and it comes up and it's, fr- you know, Friday shutdown and it's got a couple of different, uh, pieces to it. One is offload social media apps. So I go into my, <laughs> I go into my iOS, uh, settings on my phone. And what I do is I go down and I say, all right, bye bye Facebook. I offload it. And then, you know, all the different social apps, uh, including my, uh, spark email mm-hmm. and, wow. I, you know, and what this does, and, and if you don't know what offloading means, it means it's not just for space, although it can be, what it does for me is, is it the app is there, your settings are intact, everything's there, but you can't use it until you redownload the app and like fill in the contents of the app shell there, if you will. So, mm-hmm. So what's cool, and I've, and you know, it happened twice this weekend, past weekend. Um, I went to tap Facebook and then it s- started to download. And so then I pressed and held into the force touch and said, cancel download because it was taking long enough that I'm like, wait a second. I was not supposed to be using this. So it's that wow. extra guardrail <laughs> to keep me from going uh-huh. and wasting time on the weekends on social. That's one component. The other is just intentionally planning out your weekend prior to the weekend happening. So like, for example, I knew one of the things I was going to do was have some down. I I definitely wanted to take a nap both days. I didn't plan. I didn't say specifically, no, must happen from this time to this time. But I like said, no, I want one both those days. I think I need it this weekend, (laughs) especially. And, you know, take a look at the calendar, see what's going on. Um, clean out the garage. We did that for about two hours because it really, really needed it. Uh, so it's, it's that whole shutdown routine and you can have that daily, but like it's, in, it's incredibly important for the weekend as well, because like I try not to do work at all over the weekend and like truly recharge. And, and I've been doing this since like the end of December and it really, really helps. And especially the, the get the app thing, getting rid of the apps. Mm-hmm. No, that's cool. What about during the day? Do you have any sort of structure like startup routine, um, end of day routine? Yeah. So that's what I do. And that's, you know, when I talked about experimenting, changing things up for my mornings now, I've decided that what I'm going to do is break that in kind of two parts. So my first thing, uh, instead of feeling like I've got to rush out the door, Instead, what I'll do is I'll do my kind of morning wake up, sit down and, uh, you know, maybe get some coffee and or first off, regardless of the coffee, drink a bunch of water, um, pull out my planner, pull out, uh, maybe do some Bible reading and or uh, meditation stuff. Look, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's basically me time, you know, yep. Yep. me time starting the daytime kind of thing. And at that point, then once I've done that, depending upon if my son wakes up early or not, because he (laughs) is all over the place with that, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, but he's good at getting stuff like he's getting into a really good routine by himself. Like he'll get up, he'll get his clothes on and he'll grab a, you know, kind of a breakfast snack and he'll go sit and watch a cartoon or two till it's time for him to get ready and like get out the door. And he's all he needs is his shoes at that point. So Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm envious sort of, but anyway, (laughs) (laughs) and he's in kindergarten, you know? So, but uh, then I have like a couple of tasks for my day job that I've got listed out and, you know, 
honestly, the faster I do them, the quicker they're done. And so I kind of just check those off real quick if I can, uh, if it's a weekday. And at that point, and, and part of that is just putting out any fires or checking to make sure there aren't any, because typically there aren't. Like most of the time we're like, well, what if something happens? No, it won't. Like you're just, you're just afraid of not being connected at all times. Trust me. Sure. Sure. No, no, sure. sure. So once I've caught, once I've kind of gotten those out of the way, like depending upon what day of the week it is, I've got either standing meetings and, or, uh, certain routines that I have to do with like, I don't know whether it's a live video show that day or, um, a meeting to prep for that show. Um, so knowing which day or, or I've got actual meetings that I'm leading and knowing which day it is, then I'll turn my attention to prepping for those things uh, or at least finalizing the prepping. Cause usually I'm a little bit, mm-hmm. I'm further ahead. I don't want to leave it to like, Oh, I've got a meeting in an hour. I better prep for that right now. You know, <laughs> kind of a thing last minute, but uh, just go over the notes again, kind of stuff. And then once I know again, what, what the, and, and kind of that, you know, and again, here's the thing. So here's the thing. You, you've heard me say, like, I went over my planning. I'm, you know, kind of review and all that kind of stuff. That's more big picture. That's more family. That's more family calendar. That's more, you know, everything but work. But then once I move into the work time, then I do another little microcosm of that, that whole, like, sure. you know, what's the week look like? What's today? What's today look like? What's the week look like? What's next week look like? Just so I don't forget, like, Oh yeah, maybe it would be better to move this around that kind of, you know, stuff. Mm-hmm. Once I'm at once I'm at that point, like once I'm past that point, we're probably at like say um and now accommodating a little bit for I'm going to move my workout time. We're probably at about nine o'clock. but I've gotten a but I mean, consider how much I've gotten done already, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously. So, at that point like I know what I need to do the rest of the day and it's primarily like I try to keep it to three things like again, Michael Hyatt, he's just convincing like he's done the he's done the research and he's been doing it so long. Like, yes, if if, if, I've, if I've got three things for the day and one of them's a meeting, what are the other two things? And, what you know, can I get one of them done before lunch and one done before the afternoon and then I'm done and try to push things forward through to completion. And then oh, because it is uh, because I work from home, what I try to do is have a mental commute. So at the end of the day. Uh, I try to stop doing things, but still stay in my office and maybe look at things physically like a book or something else, or even, you know, uh, open up a mini version of a, um, oh, what's it called? Like a legal planner, like the small version of that and just have it on my lap and just kind of write things down. Yeah. Like a steno notebook and just write stuff down that way without capturing it like digitally just to start getting out of digital and getting off the screens as much as possible for the evening. So that's kind of, I think that's the bulk of my, uh, I like that. I like the mental commute about how long do you usually take for that? Oh gosh. See, so it depends on if, you know, so since I like to push things through to completion, if I can, um, it's more about looking in that one. I need to look at that thing and say, what's the, how, what's the, uh, the minimal amount of this I need to get done to consider it like, done and move it forward to the next day. If I have to, ideally I like to have like at least a 15, 20 minutes, but if I can get like a half hour where I'm still kind of working, I'm, I'm also kind of like passing the baton to myself for the next day. You know, I'm setting Uh myself up to, I'm setting future me up for success tomorrow. So, but yeah, if I can take like half an hour and, and heck, if I'm done quicker than that, like, I've been known to crack the iPad and sit it there and turn on like a Parks and Rec or something just to, you know, <laughs> no, I think that's, that's, that's about, I work from home as well. well. Yeah. So, and yeah, my mental, I don't have a mental commute uh, as much. Like I usually take about 15 minutes at the end of the day and I will map out my day for tomorrow. So I kind of write down the things that I, you know, I, I transfer, like what tasks did I not get done today that I was hoping to. So I'll transfer those over to a new page in my notebook. I use kind of analog stuff. Um, and kind of like some of the goals, you know, my big three for tomorrow, what are those going to be? And when am I going to focus on those? Um, and then, so that takes me five, 10 minutes or so. And that's for me, that's it. And then I walk upstairs and it's a 15 second commute into you know, now we've got three boys at home, so it's just chaos and craziness, which is awesome. But sometimes I don't, you know, just to be candid, sometimes I don't always feel prepared, um, for that transition. 
and like my mind is still kind of on work and I'm still sort of emotionally tired from the work day. Um, and I don't feel like ready to dive in. It's like, man, it would be nice to have, um, something that's more intentional at the end of the day to help me kind of get a little bit of that unwinding so that I don't have to unwind in front of my family that I can instead be ready to, to, to hit the ground running with my boys and stuff like that. So, yeah. One of the other things I'll do once in a while is like, if I'm done with that time and I go out to the rest of the house and it's still going to be, be, be a while for dinner. Uh, you know, I, I want to say this happens a lot. It doesn't, but it's one of those things where I try to do it with the weather is good is ask my kids, Hey, do you want to go on a walk real quick? And we'll go around the block or two. And yeah. then it's kind of like you got out of the house for a while and then you walk back in and it's like, yay, daddy. So, well, you were just here. Yeah. But like, I'm home again, you know, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> it, it helps psychologically. These triggers and things like do help. Like, you know, they really they, do. you know, getting out of the house, you know, leaving work at work and then coming home, like us home people, those, those, you know, remote workers, even if we work for ourselves or for others, like those, that stuff's important. So Eric, um, fi final question here. Somebody that is trying to get started with being more productive, uh, with their time or whatever it may be. Um, do you have like a single piece of advice? Maybe that sort of like that minimum effective dose, so to speak of what, like what's that first step or something that they should focus on or what would just be your, your initial advice for someone who's like, I'm just still not feeling great about this stuff. I'm not really in control. I'm overwhelmed with stuff. I don't feel organized, whatever that may be. What would your advice if you had to pick one thing? I, I, if I pick one thing, I say, go to a coffee shop, get a coffee, sit down with a paper uh, notepad and a pen or a pencil or an eras erasable pen, whatever. Sit down and analogly. That's not a word. Um, it is now you. Brain, do a brain dump, like sit there and just enjoy your coffee and think about why you're overwhelmed. And every time something comes up and it's like, oh, haven't um paid mom back for such and such money she lent me or uh, need to in need to investigate possibly switching phone plans or need to figure out if I can sell this laptop, uh, all those random things or or just, you know. Not sure how to do this certain role in my life, whether that's a work role, a family role or a volunteer kind of thing, you know, start writing all those things down. It's that beginning point of self-awareness. It also kind of, you know, acknowledges it. And then from there, once you've got all these different things, you can start to group them and or you can start to put some of them away. Give yourself permission and say, OK, these I'm not dealing with right now. I will deal with them. I've written them. I've acknowledged them. But here are the like five things I can do right now and like check off the list. If I just make this phone call or uh, th write this email or look this one thing up online and then I check that off and then those are done and, you know, get some quick wins and start to build momentum. That's what I would do if I was feeling overwhelmed. In fact, I do this like, I don't know, I would say once every I don't know, two to three months, basically about once a quarter. This is kind of something I sit down and do just to be like, okay, it's been too long and, uh, I'm, I'm, my nerves are frayed, uh, which is probably not good for me to go get a coffee, but do it anyway, or a tea <laughs> or I don't know, whatever, uh, uh, something fancy. Anyway, go to a place, get out of your normal circumstances somewhere you're going to, you know, and make it, make it an enjoyable thing. Uh, heck, get a beer. I don't care. Go. Uh, that might actually be better because it'll loosen you up. I don't know. Anyways. So then do that and you start to just give yourself permission to unravel that overwhelm and then start to pick at it and, you know, start to order those things. That's the best way to do it, in my opinion. No, that's awesome. That's great advice. No, I, I totally recommend that as well. It's get Just get it all out, out of your head, onto the page. It's helpful. You're like, oh, it's not like even just seeing it, it's, it's finite, I think is, is helpful that you're like, oh, this only took one page or maybe it took a whole notebook, but whatever it was, it was, you know, it's finite. And sometimes that overwhelm is that you've got this feeling of, I don't have control over it. I can't handle it all. You put it all on paper, you can hold it. You're like everything that I was so freaked out about, um, I can crumple up into a ball and throw in the trash right now. <laughs> like, right. Like there's that sense of it's, it's now it's physical. I can handle it. I can see it. I can manage it. Um, and it is not infinite. It's, it's just finite. That's really great advice, Eric. Thank you so much. Um, anything else? Did you have any, anything you wanted to say? 
No, I think, I mean, one of the, you will, you'll find it once you start doing this, it's going to hit you at weird times where you're just like, oh man, I really just need to sit and do this now. And so funny story, like when you and I saw each other last at, uh, Jeff Goins tribe conference, like middle of the second day, I'm sitting there during a session, somebody's up on stage speaking and I like pull open the notebook and just start writing these things down and, I'd done it so much that I was just like, well, this stuff goes under home. This stuff goes under work. This stuff goes under podcast. Here's some stuff that's like that I don't like about me very much right now. And I got to work on that, like that, kind of, those kinds of things. And honestly, I, that, so then I felt like the, the conference was well worth the money because like that one time. So there you go. And you can do this for free anytime you want. You can do it for free for a dollar ninety nine for a cup of coffee. There you go. So. No, that's awesome. Eric, where can people go to find you? Best place, honestly, is just beyond the to do list.com. My Twitter and everything else is there. The show is there. And uh, that's just where to keep up. Awesome. Thanks, man. I really appreciate your time. Some, I've got some, I've got some inspiration here. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Well, that's another podcast episode crossed off your podcast listening to-do list. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation. I know that I did, and I was glad to be able to share it with you. Thanks again to Sean Blanc for giving me permission to share this conversation with you. And if you are interested in checking out the Things 3 course, All the Things, head on over to the show notes for this episode, which you will find at beyondthetodolist.com slash 283. Once you're there, you can click that link and go check out the All the Things course on Things 3. And I will say this, uh, if you're using Things 3, great. You're going to get a lot out of it. If you're not, you would still get something out of this. It's not an expensive course. As a Things 3 user, I love this course, as well as all the extra bonus benefit productivity stuff that is in the course, both audio and video. Anyway, go check it out. Again, show notes beyond the to do list dot com slash 283. And I definitely need to have Sean back on the show very, very soon. That said, if you enjoyed this conversation, I'd love for you to share it with someone that you know would enjoy it. Just hit that share button in your podcast listening player of choice. Or if you're on desktop again, just hit that share button. Let somebody know about this conversation. Thanks again for listening. And I will see you next episode.